Welcome back, everybody. We're live here from Westview. I'm here with my mate, as always, Logan Myers. How you doing? Hey! Hey, Sport! Uh, hey, Sport! It's great to be back here talking about WandaVision, and I have a vision tonight that we it talk looks like about you're in Sword headquarters. I know it's all bright in the background, so I apologize, <laughs> but I'm in the local dining room, so I'll tr- it's annoying. I'll try to ignore it. <laughs> well, you still look beautiful, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to chalk it up to you being so angelic. Uh, that's true. I feel like I'm an angel right now. Something spiritual, and it's uplifting right here. <laughs> we, li- we try to lift everybody up on this podcast. Lift Let's them raise up. The- get them up. Raise the roof, everybody. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, tonight we were talking about WandaVision episodes five and six. First, we're going to delve into episode five, which the title of episode five is on a very special episode. And how does it start, Uncle Logan? What kind of intro do we see this week? What it, decade are we in? And it looks like straight up 80s. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. It's like uh, <laughs> Growing Pains meets like Full House meets Family Ties. It's like them younger and older and really cool nod and paying homage to the shows of that time, which the show has been doing since the beginning is, you know, different eras, paying homage to a lot of the shows back in the day. But this one is definitely aimed at the 80s. We have Viz with his nice, beautiful wig on, his blonde wig. <laughs> He's got like the the flannel shirt and the the jeans that go super high. Looks like every dad in like sitcoms back in the day, like Alan Thick, Growing Pains, reminded me of her, like Danny Tanner, you know, all the shows back then. So it's pretty funny. And then you have Miss Wanda in her '80s gear. What she had? She had like a dress on, I think, but uh, she had like the '80s hair too. She so kind of had like a she kind of had like a flannel looking shirt, I think, too, like a and like suspenders on. Yeah, hair. that's what it was. That's what it was. You get <laughs> yeah. it mixed up. But it definitely had the look and feel, and obviously the kids are older too, so they all look like, you know, the cookie cutter family of that time. Like it was all like happy and go lucky. Hey, Chip, what are you doing after school today? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not like yeah. Real life it at definitely all. <laughs> looked like it looked like every house in suburbia in the eighties. Yeah. You know, they always had the big house. The big staircase, and uh, yeah, they had the clothes, the matching clothes, and yep, they definitely captured the the spirit of the 80s there with the intro and just how everything looked in the episode. <laughs> yeah, definitely had that feel to it. I really appreciate it because it's my favorite era for movies, TV shows, and music, so I loved it. And uh, as we've been talking about every few weeks, we've been talking about the first four episodes. We're back talking about the next two, five, and six, but episode five is a good time, and we're finding out more about Wanda and Vision. Vision is slowly starting to understand what's going on and really kind of looking around and seeing, like, something's not right here with Wanda. This is not a real-life situation. It's not reality. It doesn't feel like. So they kind of butt heads throughout the episode. Yeah, each episode they're peeling back the layers. Vision is learning more and figuring things out. He knows something's wrong. He can't pinpoint it. But in, starting in episode five, he's really starting to see it a lot more. We see, we see some weird things happen in the house uh, with the with the twins. They're trying to get the twins to go to the, go to sleep in the beginning, and you know you have both of uh, both Wanda and Vision trying to get the kids to uh, go to sleep. They've been up all night. The parents are tired. Uh, it was pretty funny to see Vision grab the pacifiers and he comes down the stairs and he's got them in his ears and he's like, <laughs> "Well, I don't think these are made for noise canceling." <laughs> <laughs> the laugh track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even like unintentional comedy that's there, it's just really funny. It really has that really awesome vibe and atmosphere to it that we grew up loving watching TV shows back in the day. And again, Paul Bettany just is there has the comedic relief. And Wanda's like, come on, Vision, you can't do that. You know, she has the voice. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's, sure I got to give it up. Elizabeth Olsen, man, she's so good in the show. Like, she really sells the character, and you see a darker side to her. But each episode, I'm more and more loving her, even though she seems like she could be a villain. But I love the way she's doing this character. Man, she's a way better actress than her sisters, the, the Olsen <laughs> twins. Yeah, that's for times sure. Better. A thousand times better. Yeah, and this show's really given her a chance to shine. We didn't get to see a lot of her in the Avengers. She was like the sixth or seventh lead. We got to see a little bit of her. We didn't really get to see her personality come through or anything like that or see what she could do. But yeah, this show's definitely given her a chance to shine, and she's doing a great job playing this uh, difficult role where 
we're finding out that all this like fantasy, her, her family life, it's all in her head, of course, and she's she's uh, kind of making all this up in her fantasy world, but it's also actually happening, um, and it can be seen from the outside world as we see with Sword and how every, you know all the people that she's basically keeping in her little world under her spell, they're actually there from the outside world too. So it's pretty cool to see her try to balance all this and still play the 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 mom from the sitcom but at the same time she, you know as people are figuring things out you know we see her go back to her uh, scarlet witch and we see some of her powers come back into play well, this episode we find out more about vision we find out that wanda kidnapped his body from sword right so that was yeah pretty that's interesting. crazy not only is it against the they mentioned it at sword headquarters uh what's the guy's name uh, uh taylor uh, howard tyler Tyler Hayward. Hayward, I Hayward listen to that backwards. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're they're explaining about that. They explain that yeah, we find out that that uh, Wanda ended up stealing Vision's body from the headquarters, which goes against the they said the Sokovia Accords. And not only that, we learned that Vision had uh, you know in his living will or whatever his last will and testament had said you know don't don't bring me back once I'm gone I'm gone. So not only has she gone against international rule she's gone against the wishes of vision himself <laughs> uh, she kind of interrupted a chain of events it seems like that could ultimately bring back other villains maybe ultron we don't know but she messed up the everything going on and bringing him back to life in this whole like false reality this world of wandavision the sitcom world and it really messed up everything and having to do with other uh, dimensions and uh, universes and things like that so it's messing up a chain it's like a chain of events it's really messing everything up and uh, you know brings up more questions how this is all going to work out in the end how it's all going to maybe tie together or answer more questions that we have or set it up into Doctor Strange absolutely yeah it's it's opening it up and you know it's opening up the world we have all these other characters that uh, you know Marvel was able to acquire, you know, from the deal where Disney bought up all the Fox and Sony stuff. So we're having X Men. You know, everybody's in play now. So um, all Quicksilver. Those Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Yep. Yep. So yep. Speaking of Quicksilver, we'll just say it right now. We see old Quicksilver come in at the end, but it's not the Pietro that we saw from uh, Age of Ultron. It's it's not her brother as she knew him. It's a little different face, but a face that we've uh, seen before, especially if you've seen the uh, x-men movies the first class and the the new the new cast we don't the see younger. we don't see alan aaron taylor we see uh the younger uh you know pretty much better quicksilver <laughs> he has more of a personality i, I like yeah. him better than the original so that was yeah that was so do i cool. i so do i i think aaron taylor johnson he was just kind of there in age of ultron he has the thick you know european accent didn't have much to do got killed off obviously in the movie uh, but I love Evan Peters all around as an actor. I love this guy. I think he's always pretty great, pretty solid. And he brings an A performance, A-plus performance in this showing up at the very end of episode five, which was a huge surprise. Like, I did not see that coming. I would have guessed other people from the MC, MCU would have showed up. But Evan Peters showing up as Quicksilver at the very end is Peter, and not Pietro, Pietro or whatever. Peter shows up at the end. So that was really awesome. And finally, we're getting the X-Men in the MCU, fin finally. We've, you know, it's been a huge uh, theory that they're going to be bringing in X-Men in the MCU in the next phase. And they answer it with this, really. So this sets up a lot of things for the future of the MCU, where they're going with this. That was really huge, seeing his character come in. Because, like you said, that opens up all the possibilities. We have all the possibilities to see all those, that same actors that we saw in first class and those movies uh we could see you know who knows who can pop in now any of those characters they're all in play now so maybe they're going to continue on with those characters in the next marvel uh movies for x-men maybe we're going to see that same same batch of characters uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how that is done and we know that uh from the comics that wanda and uh pietro's uh parents uh well we know the father is uh magneto so you know Yep. Could my could Fassbender come back? You know, are we uh, gonna just how much are they gonna reveal? I wonder. That's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy moving forward. That that that'll be one way to like launch into this next phase. Like just completely guns blazing. Like okay, now it's on. Like here you go. We're not gonna make you wait all this time. We're just gonna 
say, okay, here's the X-Men. Here's how we're going to introduce them. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty excited to see who else is going to show up here and how it's going to work. <laughs> Yeah, I was predicting. I would I would see Fassbender returning as Magneto, but that may be obvious. But I would love to see that him showing because him showing up because I love his character, his portrayal of the character, the younger version of um, Magneto, obviously being the dad of the twins. So that's really interesting. Also, in this episode, we have Monica Rambo having to do with a drone technology that had to do with Stark, which is Tony Stark's dad, which is Howard, obviously back in the eighties. The drone that goes into the hex right so that was pretty mm -hmm. interesting yep. so there's a lot of tie-ins and nods and things going on in one division that has to do with the mcu and this being stark industries yeah we're seeing we're seeing all the other previous uh movies we're seeing them all come together everything in the history of the marvel movies we've seen so far and we're seeing yeah we're seeing howard stark stuff still pop up it's still relevant even though we're supposedly not going to see tony stark and iron man and all you know the previous characters um they're still in play it's still huge over this universe and it's gonna it's gonna lead into this next phase of films and yeah we we learn a lot about uh monica rambeau in this episode and like you mentioned with the with the whole drone and all that we see the leader of sword hayward kind of you know, we saw him be kind of pretty nice to Monica Rambeau. We, we thought, you know, he, he might be a likable guy. But we see in this, you know, he's going to do whatever. He's going to go against whatever. He wants to basically take out Wanda. He thinks that she's evil. He sends this drone in, which he actually had equipped with these missiles. And as we see in the episode, he tries to fire on Wanda, and it really pisses her off. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's an understatement. Not a good way to go about it, to piss her off. You know, she's super powerful and she's controlling this world. And she's like, no, nah, dude, it's not going to work this way. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> uh, it's probably not going to end well for this guy. But he starts off in the show kind of nice, you know, the higher up a sword and, and controlling and everything. And you see that it his intentions are not good. And it really pisses her off in this episode. Yep. And we see we see the aftermath. We don't see the missile hit on Wanda but we see Wanda with, uh, you know, she's back in her Scarlet Witch attire, the same that we saw in Avengers are very close to that. And we yep. see her with the drone. It's destroyed. She's bringing it back. She goes outside the hex to confront S.W.O.R.D. And, and in this scene, uh, there's another little clue for maybe Magneto and maybe how they're going to, you know, at least talk about the parents and her father being Magneto. Because in the scene, she ends up turning all the weapons onto S.W.O.R.D., so all the lasers go on there, and that was just like a scene Magneto. with Magneto from, yeah. uh, I think, First Class, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did it a lot, but yeah, that's definitely uh, having to do with X-Men, her father. And, you know, her and her brother being Wanda and Peter Pietro, they hate Stark because he was the reason behind the parents dying, right? The Stark right. mom that went off of Asia Ultron, so they always had this hostility towards uh, Stark Industries, the Avengers, it has to do a lot, again, with the movie Age of Ultron, and it's really cool watching this and going back to revisit Age of Ultron to see how it all connects. It really makes sense. So if you guys out there are watching, you should go back and revisit Age of Ultron. It'll catch on to a lot of stuff that they're throwing into the show that has to do with that movie. This show definitely makes you want to go back and revisit some of those films, especially if it's been a few years since you've seen them. Like me, I haven't seen that. I think I only watched that movie once. I maybe uh, went back to it a couple times just to watch a couple of the big, like, I think the Hulk versus Iron Man. I watched that again, but I didn't watch the whole film. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go revisit it just to make sure that I caught everything because, yeah, that Age of Ultron has really played into this one a lot, just showing uh, Wanda's backstory. And, you know, she had a lot to do in that movie with her brother and then the events basically spiraled out of control from that from that film and we see a lot of that trauma show up on this show of course uh, another thing that we should talk about is how as you know we see vision slowly figuring things out we see him back uh, working in this it's not the same place but it's kind of the same work he's working as a computer a computer uh, i don't know i guess an it guy basically or works on computers at computational services incorporated <laughs> and uh, they're actually talking about surfing the internet. We see a little dial up in there, and uh, one of the one of the things Vision says is "Cowabunga, dude!" I like he's surfing <laughs> on the internet. He has a phone yeah. line there. They get an email, which is a secret communication from Sword, 
so they open it up and he's reading it and like um his coworker there uh you know kind of laughs it off or whatever because the message because oh well, all the office staff come over all his coworkers come over and they're reading it and it's basically a message about uh Dr uh Darcy Lewis's findings on what they call the Maximoff anomaly there are high levels of radiation at the perimeter about the hex you know and its effect on the Westview residents is unknown and it, it makes it makes all his coworkers uh burst out laughing but you know he he knows that this there there's something going on, and he you know he knows this is true. Uh, he ends up touching his coworker Norm's head, which changes uh, it changes Norm's personality right away. And basically, Norm says, you know, you have to stop her. You can't you can't let her do this to us. Um, and uh, you know he figures out that Wanda's in his coworker's head. You know he he figures out that uh, she's controlling him, and uh, you know he. He he feels it and uh, he touches Norm's head again and snaps him back to normal. But yet another another thing that Vision sees that uh, you know and a confirmation on that Wanda is actually controlling this reality that he's living in. Yep, and that really starts a huge fight between the two because Vision's on to her what she's doing in this false reality, this fake world they're living in. How he's brought back, he was dead, right? So he's on to her. They get into a huge fight, which sets up the final scene with uh, Evan Peters showing up at the very end, which is awesome. So the, I guess the biggest revelation takeaways is this Quicksilver showing up, a different Quicksilver than we've seen in the MCU, and the Fox side being X-Men. So it's a huge takeaway, meaning the mutants are introduced into the multiverse and the MCU, which you know leads into more characters probably showing up along the way. Uh, there's been hints at Mephisto. I don't know how you pronounce that. Mephisto. Yes. Yeah, Mephisto showing up, the devil, really bad villain. Um, he basically pretends to be dead people, and he manipulates superheroes and other villains. So it can actually be him instead of Quicksilver. It could be him um, behind the face, I guess. It's actually Mephisto. Um, and there's just a lot of other stuff that they brought into this episode. But I really enjoyed the ending, how they threw that in, and what that leads into in episode six, which is the Halloween episode. Um, it's Absolutely. Yes. Episode five was a really great episode. It showed us more about how Vision is finding out that Wanda's controlling everything. Another big thing that we uh, could take away from episode five is with the kids, we uh, we all of a sudden saw them grow another five. And I think they start they initially they were f from, from babies to about five years old. And then in the same episode, they grew about another five years. So okay. we're seeing them around 10 years old. Yeah. And there was another a little break in there with Agnes, where she she sort of uh, she comes over. They get they find this dog. Agnes is, comes over with a kennel for him, and there's kind of a, a something happens. I can't exact I can't remember exactly what it was, but basically uh, Agnes says, "Hey, Wanda, you want to try that part over there?" You know, she she knows that Wanda's controlling things. She says, "Hey, do you want to you want to?" It's kind of like almost she's like an actor. In, in the sitcom, and she's sort of like, hey, maybe we should try that again. That, that the, didn't work out. And Vision's like, what? Did, you, did you notice that? What was she talking about there? What are you talking about, Viz? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everything's coming to fruition, and um, everything's coming out, basically, about how twisted Wanda is. She's dealing with grief and loss, and this is how she's dealing with everything. She hasn't really dealt with it, you know, in the movies. He dies, and they're like, okay, moving on. Uh, let's, you know, fight the next bad guy or whatever. So she never really dealt with that. And this is the aftermath. This is her world and her dealing with everything. Her having this perfect family with Vision and the people that are in it that are probably don't want to be in this situation but are stuck in there. And they're really catching on. And Vision's catching on to Wanda, what she's doing here. And it's not good. Woo! It's getting good. I think we have, what, two or three episodes left. I think there's going to be nine total. So in episode five, a very special episode, WandaVision had a great time with it. Love how they introduced Quicksilver being a X Men character, Evan Peters showing up. A lot of great stuff leading up until the next episode. I'm going to give it a four out of five hair pieces. And I'm going to give episode five of WandaVision a four out of five sword hair pieces. Oh, Tyler Hayward. Oh. Oh. I feel You're like so that guy was. Flipped. 
I feel like he was in Gilmore Girls or some show like back in the I day. I know. Yeah, he looks, he looks like a he looks like a, a handsome fifty year old gentleman that you'd see as like the dad in one of those CW shows back in the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even now, like Riverdale or something, you know? Right. Like a, a a well aged male with perfectly coiffed hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which uh, leads up to the next episode. Episode six is probably one of my favorites of the season called Halloween Spooktacular. Ooh. All new Halloween Spooktacular. Ooh. I All love Hall- the scenes of the neighborhood. I, I like how they set the tone there for a nice 90s suburban Halloween. Yeah. I wish Halloween, the new movie, could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a different subject. But yeah, the whole setup atmosphere. This is like total uh, nod to Malcolm in the middle, like the nineties, two thousands, like the intro, how the kids are talking to the camera, like Malcolm did really cool way. They set up this episode and um, right in the beginning, single camera, single Single camera, camera comedy. Yep. Exactly. And I love how their Halloween costumes or their costumes from the comics, which is absolutely fantastic vision, Wanda, and then Quicksilver had the, the gear on from the comics, even the hair that looked like Ace Ventura. (laughs) <laughs> I like how it's here. We're yeah. watching. We're watching. And I'm like that. Totally looks like Ace Ventura, but that's the character from the comics. So uh, they're going trick or treating. It's Halloween. Vision's part of the neighborhood watch. He's going to be on the lookout for local criminals and bad things going on, supposedly, or what he says. Right. But we know he's not going to do that. So that sets up the episode. The kids going trick or treating. The kids have superhero powers that we find out about. Billy and Tommy. I loved, yeah, I love seeing this this uh, suburban Halloween. I lo- yeah, the costumes were great. I love how Vision explained. He explained his costume. I think one of his son. Uh, I think yeah, it was Evan Peters was asking him, "Hey, what are you supposed to be?" And Vision told him he was a Mexican wrestler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never thought I that, that like. Uh, Bettany would be that funny in the show because like everything he's in he's so dry like he's very like yeah. a dramatic performer or actor like he's like unintentionally funny in the show and he always has like the really good comedic bits that I love yeah yeah I love him in this role yep, he's a, a great suburban dad and I love how he's portraying this like fi- you know finding all this madness and figuring it out one layer at a time and uh, yeah you mentioned how they're all dressed up like their characters in the comics Somebody mentioned Evan Peters' hair. I don't know. Maybe did Quicksilver's hair look like that on the comics? Somebody said it might be like a nod to Wolverine, maybe Wolverine's hairstyle. But I, I, I guess thought so. I, some of the comics, mm-hmm. I think his hair was like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. But it and then yeah, it's pretty interesting. Costume. The kids had like the he has a speed power too. Yeah. Uh, the older kid, Tommy, I guess. Billy uh, at the end has like telepathic powers, so. Yeah, they definitely have superhero powers, which eventually we're going to see these kids growing up and leading into the next phase. But it's uh, really cool, and I love seeing what they're made of as young kids, being 10 years old and having these powers and, like, trick-or-treating and going all super fast around (laughs) the the neighborhood. And it really had a cool vibe to it, and I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday, so I thought they really pulled that off. They did a good job. And when Vision was on his uh, neighborhood watch, he noticed a neighbor – uh, hanging out a little basically she had one of those skeletons that hang hang off a tree or hang off a wire or whatever and she was just like holding it like real still moving the arm up and down to make it look like it was waving or whatever but she was like really still her eyes didn't blink all you could see was a single tear coming down i thought that was really interesting another break on the action about how wanda could control everybody you know she can even pause like people from being there interacting uh, basically, she she was still moving the she was still moving the decoration, but yeah, you saw that single tear running down her eye. Mm-hmm. So she's another another pawn in this fantasy world, and yet another thing that Vision has has seen. And in this episode, we saw Vision uh, finally. You know, he he put the pieces together, and he's going to go find out what's on the edge of Westview. We see yep. him go way up in the sky. We see him see the the lights just outside the hex of the sword. He sees the big spotlights. So he's going to go investigate, um, and then he ends up going to. He ends up flying over to, I think it was Ellis Avenue, which Wanda said in the episode. She she told she told the kids not to go past Ellis Avenue. So we know that's basically after Ellis Avenue, that's where the hex is going to be. You don't want to travel outside of there. Exactly, and that's when Vision was investigating that. We know he's not part of the neighborhood. Well, he's part of the neighborhood watch, but we know he wasn't doing that on Halloween. He was investigating. <laughs> him going out right. there, he 
uh, comes across Agnes, which is acting very weird. Something's off with her. They're having up the, having this conversation, and she's like really out of it, and she's like, "You're an Avenger," and Vision's like, "Avenger? What's an Avenger?" She's like, "You're dead." What? Like he's like, "What's going on?" And then like he touches her, and she's like, "Back to the sitcom Agnes that we know." I've always been wondering about her character, like what's going on with her exactly? Who is she? And I still think her husband is Mephisto. 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 Yeah. yeah I think there, I think her there husband, definitely is something. There is something going on with her, without a doubt. They wouldn't put her so big in the series. You know, she she always shows up to uh, show to show you know this this there's something going on. And yeah, I have a feeling that we're going to see a big revelation with her. I could see that her husband being Mephisto. She's she. There's something definitely there. Yeah, he's a big part of this. I really have a feeling like he's disguised. I don't know if it's Quicksilver or somebody else, but he's definitely at play here and obviously doesn't have good intentions and he's messing with the people in the town. And I'm sure we'll see that at the, like that, the very last episode. It'll be like a cliffhanger with introduction of him or something. But I think that's what's going on with her. I think her husband is that character. But that was I thought that was pretty interesting, seeing her and like totally out of it, which we've never seen before in the show. And then he like touches her and goes back into it. And then Vision breaks through the hex and you kind of see him deteriorating and dying, which then leads to his kids hearing him crying for help kind of thing. And um, then at that point, Wanda and her brother Quicksilver are having a conversation like, what's going on here? You know, like, what? how was this built? And she's like, I don't know. And then they go to try to help vision out yeah there was yeah there was there was a good conversation there between wanda and pietro about their family life and pitch you know pietro evan peters he's in on this like he knows that wanda's controlling all this which is kind of interesting so like whoever he is wherever he came from like he's he's on to it like he he can he knows what his sister's up to and he's kind of impressed with it he's like man you've this is this is crazy how'd you do this he's asking questions like that they're talking about their parents uh, they're kind of, uh, you know, talking about talking about the past together, uh, you know, talking about memories and yeah, uh, just just seeing those two together like they instantly had better chemistry than the Quicksilver. Eric, he's like, what happened to your accent? She's like, what happened to yours? Like, it's funny <laughs> because in the movie, they have a really thick European accent. Right. And then the next movie yeah. that doesn't have one, they never really, yeah. <laughs> never really did. They never really dived into that, so I thought they were kind of po- <laughs> they were poking fun at Age of poking Ultron, fun at it. which is really funny. Evan Peters yeah. is great, anyways. Yeah, um, he's like the drunk uncle, like in every sitcom in the nineties. <laughs> into the- Cody from uh, Step by Step, Whoa! yeah, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you know, they, they had that character um, in every show back in the day. I thought he pulled it off. He added his own comedic spin to it, but I thought he was really great. He fed off Wanda in this episode, and you know, being. The uncle to the kids. He had a great time with the kids, like being the yeah. uncle and helping him out. Loved the kids loved him. They're like chugging pop and getting, <laughs> getting all lit. Getting all lit around the neighborhood. Yeah, he, he helps the he helps the boys go around and get all the candy from the neighborhood. That was pretty funny, that one scene. Like all the candy goes uh, missing. And the, the one guy, the neighbor that's on the watch too, has a walkie-talkie. And they're like, all the candy's gone. And that happens instantaneously because they're speeding around, stealing everybody's candy. By the time they have to, by the time they see that their candy's gone, they're long gone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Another aspect of the show is um, Tyler Hayward kicks Jimmy Woo, Darcy, and Monica out of Sword, so they end up like hacking his computer and um, find out that he's hacking Vision's vibranium, which is pretty interesting. And uh, Jimmy knocked that or punched that one dude. That was really cool. <laughs> I yeah. didn't see that coming. I know. Yeah, we got to see a little badass there where, uh, yeah, Jimmy and Monica and Darcy there, yeah, they, they end up beating up some sword agents, stealing their clothes so they can go in and try to hack into the computer and figure out what's just what's going on with Hayward. And, yeah, they find out that he, it's a pretty nefarious plot there. He's trying to get the, the vibranium from Vision and... We we find a we find out a little bit more about possible you know and you know with these mutants we find out that every time Monica has went through the hex her her DNA at the cellular level is changing each time 
could this be our introduction? Is that how they're going to explain the mutants? Could that this possibly be another wink at the X-Men? We, we don't know yet, but it could be. I think it's a little different with mutants and the from the actual comics and stuff, but we've seen these Marvel movies change things in the past, so this could be a, a nice way to possibly... Uh, you know, uh, you know, have mutants in in this universe. It, it could be anyway. Man, they're my favorite favorite characters. They're the reasons I got into comics at a young age. I love X Men. Wolverine still my favorite. I don't see. We're, I don't think we're going to see him, but other X Men are going to show up. Obviously, um, maybe see Mag- Magneto. So I'm so excited they're introducing these characters, the mutants, finally into the MCU. We've been wanting this for what 15 years, and we're finally getting a glimpse of it. So. It's only going up from here. Yeah, if they can, if this, uh, if the Marvel movies moving forward with the X Men can get some of that like '90s X Men feel from the comics and from the cartoons and all that, if they can get that, even if they brought back that like theme music from the cartoon, that would be awesome. Just like oh, I love man. that whole look between it with all of them. I love the yellow and blue suits. Yep. I love, I love that. That's the X Men that that I'm that most know. fond of, and I want to see. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see them in that like a younger cast, you know, the characters that we now maybe bring in some actors that have played them before, maybe some new faces too, that are portraying these characters. That'd be awesome. But I would love to see the yellow and blue costumes. You know, Cause again, that's the X-Men I grew up with the comics and the TV show that's streaming on Disney plus, by the way, I've been watching it. Awesome. Yeah. I'll need to go back and revisit that for sure. Another, another uh, thing, um, not only are the X-Men kind of, you know, they're, slowly being teased in this universe, but also uh, Fantastic Four, you know, with Monica Rambeau and her, like, space program and all that. That's mm-hmm. definitely something that's been teased there, and I think the Fantastic Four are even kind of hinted at uh, in this oh, series. I- Not as much, but, yeah, we got a... When Monica, you know, first came back from the blip or whatever, and we saw those scenes where she was just getting integrated back in with S.W.O.R.D. when she you know, met again with Hayward and stuff, they kind of mentioned that, how, you know, he said, no, Monica, you're not going to go back into the space program. So I, I think I think that's probably has something to do with the Fantastic Four there as well. So Yeah, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't catch on to that, I guess. I must have missed that part. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't, I didn't actually catch it uh, during the filming. It's just, you know, reading some of these recaps and uh, maybe listening to a podcast or two where they, like, really went deep dive into the stuff they mentioned that. So I, I was like, oh, yeah, that's... That can honestly lead, you know, that's there's our way in there for the Fantastic Four. Man, they they need to do those characters justice. The movies, the three movies yeah. they've done, they just are god awful and they really need a good depiction of these characters. They're the original family and Marvel, and I would love just to see them to do these characters justice, do them right, and if they introduce them this way, I'm definitely all in. I'm excited for it. I know we're going to get a uh, Fantastic Four movie. They teased it, but they tie it into the show somehow that'd be awesome yeah it would be really cool yeah these these characters are so there's so much story here that we haven't seen it's kind of both of the movies have fell flat uh you know i like some of the cast i mean uh, of the initial one chris evans was a good human torch and all that but yeah just the movies themselves weren't great the villain wasn't good enough so it's all going to be about the story and the casting see if they can they can nail it so That'd be cool yep. if he's Human Torch and then Captain America at the same time in this multiverse. That'd be I badass. Know. And bring in that Doctor would... Doom, a good depiction, not uh, not uh, Julian McMahon. <laughs> <That played him. laughs> right. I love to see yeah. Doctor Doom. I mean, he, Julian McMahon was was pretty big at the time with Nip Tuck and all that, Nip so they just kind of capitalize on the you know the how how big he was in TV and trying yeah. to bring in a fresh face. I mean, I don't think it was necessarily his fault. It was just it was the movie wasn't going to work. It, it, it was, it was the right. right time. Yeah, it was the writing and directing too. It didn't work mm-hmm. exactly. Um, but leaving at the end of this episode, which is really awesome, with you know uh, Vision making it out of the hex and basically deteriorating, deteriorating away, kind of dying. Uh, Wanda comes in and she really expands the hex that goes further out and brings the sword agents in. To this WandaVision world, sitcom world, and it expands. They're like trying to drive away from it, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. I that mean, was a really cool scene, yeah. And how they changed my, into Carnival, the Carnival and the clowns. The clowns, yeah. It reminded me of like uh, Stranger Things with the hex, the way it looked. Yeah. I don't know. It just reminded me of that show, but 
like, huh, where the fuck are they going to go from here? Now Darcy's going to be part of the show. and Yeah, because and Darcy like, was, I think, what, was she handcuffed there? So yeah, we didn't get handcuffed. to see her fate. But yeah, we'll we'll probably see it on the next episode. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, so again, I have more questions and not sure where they're going to go with this, but they're definitely introducing going in the multiverse of other characters that we know from movies and and things like that. It can go in a million different directions. I'm not sure where they're going to go from here, where it's going to end, but I'm so excited. I love the show every Friday. Uh, Friday morning I wake up, I'm like, WandaVision. I can't wait to see what happens. So they're definitely uh, providing some good entertainment. Absolutely. Yep, I loved how the episode ended. We we saw the Hex moving. We saw Hayward. He was with someone. Who was he with there? He, I think he was with one other person was with them. They were driving away. Well, anyways, the hex was coming. So we don't know how far the hex is going to move. We don't know if it's going to catch up to him or if he's going to be able to escape. Right now, he's he's driving. A, a, you know, he's well out in front of it. So I think he might get out. Um, but we don't know where the hex is going to end. We don't know how far it's going to move out. But yeah, it leaves some uh, leaves some pretty interesting things moving forward in these these last few episodes that we're going to see. Can't wait to see where it goes from here. And yeah, just waiting every week for the show has been awesome. I don't know. I, it wouldn't be the same, honestly, if they would have just given it to us all in one batch. I think Disney, I think they should stick to this maybe one once a week because it gives us time to like think about each. They give us so much in an episode. <laughs> If you just got it all at once, you wouldn't be able to theorize, come up with all your, you know, you wouldn't be able to make your guesses on what's happening. You wouldn't be able to talk about it. You know, it's kind of like Stranger Things. They release the third season. We watch it all at once. We talk about it once or twice, and then you just kind of forget about it. That's, yeah. I don't know. So it's like, I don't know what's better, the weekly thing, but I like how they gave us a couple episodes to start and then did it one week at a time and how it's going to lead into, you know, it's gonna, how it's going to lead right into the next you know, same kind of uh, format with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're going to get a couple to start with and then once every week. And it's just going to keep this moving, you know, to yeah, the movies the, and then to the shows, you know, just being as one. Like you were saying, yeah, I, I prefer to binge shows, but things like this, it gives me a week to analyze and think about it more. So I feel like overall, the, like when we talk about it, it's better because it had, gave me more time to think about it. And that's a lot like TV shows back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 50s. So you had to wait each week to watch it. Compared to the you know digital age of streaming, you can just binge it. I like how they're doing this, and yeah. it makes you it makes you more excited as a fan to watch it the following Friday. So, another great entry in this season of Wandavision. One of probably one of probably I don't know one of my favorite episodes of the season for sure. Probably top three at least so far. We have what four left, right? Four episodes left. This is yeah, I think six. three. I think we're gonna get nine. So seven, eight, nine, three left. Oh, seven, so three. Still have more questions. No idea where they're going to take this, but I'm excited to see it. I'm along for the ride. Showrunners, directors, actors, uh, just really fleshing out the characters and leaving you wanting more. I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Uh, so we saw this ended up in the 90s, this whole theme. So are we, are we going to see an early 2000s sitcom now? What are, What's going to go on now? How are they going to change it? I don't know. I, to me, it feels like there wasn't much distinction between the 2000s shows. But yeah, they could probably do sort of like a you know, maybe a Friends or something like that where we got into the 2000s. I, I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it'll be interesting to see how it's done moving forward. Uh, they have a lot of story to tell in these three episodes, so I think we're going to get some pretty uh, interesting episodes here for sure. We're going to get some big reveals, and yeah, I can't wait to see how it's all how it all ends up and where, where we're going to go from here. Um, yeah, but with this whole theme of the episode being Halloween and everything, it's going to boost up my hairpiece rating to a four and a half out of five Jimmy Woo hairpieces. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. Obviously, I'm biased because it's Halloween and they really capture the whole atmosphere. And there's a lot of great things that happen in this. I'm going to give it a perfect five out of five Quicksilver hairpieces. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> But with that being said, we'll be back here in a few weeks to uh, review the next two episodes and then the final episode the, the following time. Um, but stay tuned to our YouTube channel. We have more reviews, podcasts, interviews. We're shooting a podcast tomorrow night with all the Cinefellas crew, except you. You're going to be busy. Um, but stay tuned for that. Lots, lots of great videos. I've been on hiatus, had surgery uh, recently, so I got like six videos to work on and post. So hang in there, guys, and stay tuned to our channel. We'll have more content coming your way. Yeah, if you guys want to win a uh, digital code copy of Lovecraft Country, uh, the HBO original series that just aired over the summer, 
uh, make sure to uh, follow on our page there and uh, you can comment on the you can comment on any of the posts uh, announcing the fellows giveaway. Use the hashtag fellows giveaway. Tell us what your favorite HBO show is of all time. Could be anything. Mine's the Sopranos, but there's so many, you know, from day to day. Game of Thrones, obviously, The Wire, Entourage. We, we loved all those True HBO Blood. shows. True Blood. Yeah, there's been so many groundbreaking ones. I mean, it's True Blood started out good, but yeah, it ended yeah. like a turd. So Fizzle, yeah, that one be on my pretty list quick. the best. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yep, and like you mentioned, uh, yep, we'll be having a lot of great content to come. Uh, so stay tuned, and we can't wait to talk about the next couple episodes. It's going to be it's just going to – just keeps getting better, this show, WandaVision. I'm glad we uh, stuck with it. The first two were different than all the rest, but uh, definitely has paid off. Yeah, with the show, I wasn't really that excited for it. I didn't know much about it, man. It's really just been kicking my ass each week and been hooked on it, so excited analyzing it, looking into it theorizing it, not really knowing where they're going to go. So that's definitely good storytelling, good showrunners that are doing this. It's in good hands. It's only going to end on it with a bang and then lead into the next show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm excited for the MCU once again. So should you. Absolutely. So until the next WandaVision review for episodes seven and eight, this has been uh, Henry Hill over here and Logan Myers over there. And we're going to ah! say, we hope you all get wild this weekend. Have a nice time. We love you. Cheers. Cheers. Love you, wild rascals. <laughs>